comfortable. You gotta get comfortable. All right. Now, I need to see the damn live chat. Oh yeah, I'm always late with VR games because it's, it's hell setting up the, the damn VR situation. So whenever you see a VR stream, just expect that I'm gonna be late. I actually gave myself a whole 20 minutes to set up and literally I'm just popping up. So, all right, what's up everybody? We are back with Vermilion, the VR painting simulator. And I am getting prepared for, I am getting prepared for my sip and paint event that we're having on Crowdcast for my channel members, Patreon members, and Discord members this Saturday. We will be doing our first landscape style painting, and I have not done anything like that. And where is the sound for the damn game? H hold on. See? Still ain't ready. Still ain't ready. All we hear is the damn ocean. All right. So, um, I was I came across a video on YouTube of uh, the developer of Vermilion, and he basically walks us through recreating a Bob Ross painting in VR. So that's what we're going to try and do. So let's uh, do that. I'm not sure if I should have the video and um, see if I can put both of them on screen at the same time. Okay. okay so y'all should be able to see both. So let's, uh, let's do this. It's nice to unwind after a long week of telling people. Welcome to the studio. My name is Thomas Vandenberg. I'm the creator of Vermilion, and together we're going to be painting loud? this Bob Ross style painting in Vermilion. Are you so loud? Ready? Let's get going. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the settings. Uh, here in the painting settings, you have the canvas mixing sensitivity and make sure it's as a default. Same for the paint thickness. Uh, we'll be making a new canvas and the size that Bob always uses is 24 by 18 inches. Either yeah, I think that's what I got. Or portrait, which you can change using the corner piece here. But for this painting, we're going to be using a landscape one. Okay. So the first thing we're going to be doing is covering our canvas in liquid white. And liquid white is nothing more than paint thinner and white. So okay. just take a brush here, mix up on the palette, and then we cover the entire canvas. And to save us some time, just use a canvas scaler and block in the entire canvas in just a few strokes. There. Now the canvas is primed and ready to go. And we did this for making some interesting sky effects. You'll see now when we add some blue. Okay, hold on, hold on. You're going too fast. You're going too fast. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. All right. So what are we doing? That as we apply it to the canvas, it automatically starts to mix with the white you just put Hold on, I think, I think I just erased my paint thinner here. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, I'm coming. I'm coming. Oh, I can make this shit bigger, right? I thought I could. Oh, use the big one. You dumbass. Right, now we can really get it on there. I just want to make sure it's really mixed in 
because I feel like I feel like it's not all right all right and now how do I clean there we go so wait now let me rewind them back some there now the canvas is primed and ready to go and with this for making some interesting sky effects you'll see now when we add some blue, the potato blue, the classic color Bob always uses, that as we apply it to the canvas, it automatically starts to mix with the white we just put down. So we'll get some interesting sky effects for free, without having to vary our colors manually so much. So let's fill it up to about halfway, and then just with a clean brush, go across with little crisscross strokes to blend out the sky a little, a little bit more. Okay. 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 Just. I, I, I think we're it getting it. Together. I think we're getting it. Look at that pretty blue. Add a little bit more darker paint here in the corner to get a little bit of a vignetting effect. Same here on the other side. I just want to make sure it's blended real nice. Okay, he said make it a little darker on the sides. Okay, a little darker. There we go. Yes, okay. yes. That's Come on, paint. Come on, paint. Color just about done. And next, we're going to be adding a couple of clouds. For this, we're going to be using, first of all, the one inch oval brush, the smooth variant, which is right here next to the two inch brush. And we just load up a bit of white paint and then just make a big old cloud shape. Okay, all right. Oh my God, look at me! Same on the other side. Oh shit, hold up. There. And now, with a dry, smooth fan brush, we can blend these clouds a little bit with the sky. Just go across. Wait, why ain't mine looking like his? Into the sky. Okay. Okay, hold on. I need more white. I need more white. I need more white. And you'll see how easily we can. So I think he did like a little, a like a little, little dab situation or, to make it cloud-like. That's what I'm gonna do. All right, he said take, the, take this brush. Quick. Hold on, hold on, hold on, sir. Hold on, please hold on. The fan brush. All right, we got our fan. We're gonna make it bigger because I really want that texture to really set in there. Yeah, like that. Yeah, real, real cloud-like. Oh, maybe I should have made it smaller. Okay, we're gonna make it smaller. Oh my God, I'm fucking it up. I'm fucking up my clouds. What is happening? Hold on, let me reposition this. Oh, okay. Can y'all still see? Okay. Am I am I blocking? No, I'm I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Uh, shit. Hold on, my my controller is is wrapped around the cable. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Okay. Okay. Wow. What the hell? Okay. I, I just need to reset, like, this is kind of a lot, okay, we're just going to, um, let's 
see if we can gonna fix fix the cloud a little bit we're gonna bring it in really pack in the color and we, we want to add dimension to the cloud okay so we're just gonna throw in some white there throw in some white here really just mix it up and then he said take the fan brush and just do Little swipes. It's just like I don't like how it's making it look though. Is he like doing circular? Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay, this is better. This is better. Okay, yeah, yeah, that look yeah, I like how that looks. I like how that looks. Alright, the cloud is kind of taking over. I'm just gonna take my little blendy brush here. We're just gonna soften the edges. Yeah, just soften the edges a little bit. So it can it can look real cloud like. See, see how I did that? See how I did that? Yes. Yes. Yes, honey. Oh my God, it's looking so cloud-like already. All right, I'm ready now. Let me clean off my brushes. I'm ready. All right, what else you got for me, bro? What else you got for me, bro? And blend out these clouds. If there's any clouds. thick paint on there, which you don't want, just Use a brush to flatten it down. There. Those are some nice looking clouds already. All right, we're ready. Another brush, which is very useful for these clouds, is the one inch blender brush. Already ahead right of you. Here. Already ahead and of you. you did that. To fluff up the clouds. Mm -hmm. the yep, sure did. So, sure did. Unlike the other brushes, which will do sort of blending with the colors around it, the this one will move the colors. So you can very easily move shapes out of these clouds. And then no matter what shape you started with, when you initially put down the white paint, you can just use this brush to move it all around and get some really nice fluffy shapes. With all painting, nothing is ever fixed. You can always move the paint around on the canvas using this brush or a couple of the other ones which you have available on the rack. So, never mind too much that the initial shape you put down isn't perfect. It's always about Boy, pushing come on, and come on, the paint around. Come on. But these are some lovely clouds, I would say. See this? Isn't oh, that amazing? Hold on. Like, you with just a few minutes, you already have this beautiful sky on the canvas, and it took us absolutely no effort. Okay. So, that's that done. The next part is going to be the water. And we'll reach for a two inch brush again, make sure it's clean, and we'll be mixing a little bit of the Pathela green with the Pathela blue, so these are these two first colors on the- Okay, hold on, we mixing colors now, we mixing colors? Okay, we mixing colors. Ah, uh, okay, hold on, let me, let me get my head, oh shit. No, I don't wanna cut it off. I'm just trying to get my head set together. Make sure it's comfortable, okay. Now we gotta take, we gotta mix. Using this brush here. Let's see, he wanna mix the green. And the blue. On your palette right here. So we get this sort of color. And then with a pretty light paint load, you're just gonna be pulling it in from the side. And just making horizontal strokes here. Why 
Why ain't it doing it right? Why my shit look like this? So I'm leaving a gap here in the middle, which is a thing that Bob always does for making um, like a bright specular highlight in the middle of the leg. But because we covered the entire canvas with paint in the first step, you'll see if I start going across, it will mix with everything. And that's not really what we're intending. So to make our highlight as bright as possible, we can use the rag and then just dip it here into the paint bucket and make a gap here in the center. And now if you go back and take the two inch brush, we can make this nice bright highlight here in the center. And just really go wild with it if you want to. Try to stay as horizontal as possible though. Wait, what is what he, what he do? Don't worry what too he much do? about the rest of the wall. Hold on, no, no, no. We'll be what you do? It all up with the foreground as bright as possible. We can use the rag, and then just dip it here into the paint bucket and make a gap here in the center. And now, if you go back and take the two-inch brush. Oh, we're just blending it out. We can make this nice. Oh, that here is in the nice. Oh, that looks so good. Oh my gosh. And just really go wild with it if you want to. I gotta Try get rid of that uh, green at the top though. though. Don't worry too much about the rest of the water because we will be covering it all up with the foreground in just a minute. Just Okay. Oh my god, that looks so nice. There, but it will all be covered up soon enough. So now the moment I'm sure we've all been waiting for is going to be the mountains, for which we use the palette knife. Okay, we're about to make some mountains. So for the mountains, we're going to be mixing up a decent color first. So let's take our palette here and take a bit of the black and some white and make a nice gray, maybe a bit darker. And I'm also going to be adding in a bit of the darker, the Prussian blue here. Because we want our mountain to really sit in the background. And because of the atmospheric haze, the further away something is, um, the more blue it will become. So, with a bit of a blue tinge, our mountain will appear farther in the background. Okay, so let's put down this mountain here. Oh my god, I ruined my color. No more black. Oh, that was so easy. Oh, that was so easy. Oh, y'all. It's so easy to make mountains. Just using plenty of paint. And you'll see that the thick paint will be put Look down. at me. I'm making mountains. And you'll be flattening it down in a minute because we don't want this paint to be so thick at this stage. So with a clean knife, using either the button or the little rag here, we will now be pushing down the thick paint on the canvas. Just to flatten everything nice and smooth so that we can easily go across it in the next stage. Let's make sure that the mountain comes all the way down to the horizon. There. Okay, so the next phase will be the snow. And for the snow, Wait, we can hold on. How do you feel that in so quick? With... Hold on, slow down. How do you feel that in so quick? You want some mountains? I'm gonna give you mountains. I'm gonna give you mountains. Yeah, this is what you want right here. Up. Yep. Look at that nice mountain. Look 
the nice man. Uh-oh, my colors is blending. It's cool. It's giving dimension. It's giving dimension. This, this shit too hard. Hold on. Little brush. Oh shit! Oh man, I done fucked up. What if I use the blending, the blending brush? And just soften the lines. It's like mad texture on the mountain. I don't really know how to get rid of it. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just blend it out. I'm gonna just blend it out. I don't know why he going so fast anyway. Among Us VR has finished installing. Right, one more time, we're going to blend it out. Soften it. I don't think mountains are meant to be soft, but look, this is my pain. This is what I want. My name's not Bob Ross. I do what I want. Okay? I do what I want. I just want a clean line across the water. We're gonna peck that in and just like go across. Oh, almost fucked up my shit. Oh, I'm gonna try his method with the fan brush. Yeah, I'm gonna try that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay, that water kind of blending in, but it's cool. It's cool. I just need to take a little bit more of the color and just overpower it a little bit. Just overpower it. Oh my god, I keep the more I keep touching these mountains, the more I'm fucking it up. I'm fucking it up. Alright, I'm 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 cool with this, I think. I'm cool with this. We got like ten different colors going on, but it's fine. It's fine. 
It's fine. Let's go. This does. It's using the edge of the palette knife to make a stipple pattern. So if we take some white here and mixing a little bit of the blue, this will be the blue, for the snow for our brighter side, and we also need the shadow side. So maybe something like this. So look, take a look at these two colors next to each other, because this is how they're going to be on the mountain: the bright side and the shadow side. Let's start with the brighter side first. And don't use pure white, at least not all of it, because it might be too too vibrant. But now, using the edge of the knife. We can put down this nice stipple pattern. Wait, how did you do that? Okay, he, he mixed some white and blue. And just when you're doing this, always remember that one side will be the light side and the other side will be the shadow side. So let's just take these edges here. If you make a mistake, just hit undo. We don't need to cover the entire thing, just you can leave a little bit of the color of the mountain as well. There, that's the bright side then. And let's also put in the shadow side here. Remember that the more you tilt the knife, the more stippled the pattern becomes. So you can really use this to easily vary. Oh, he's right. How the angle you do it. You're putting down. The angle you do it at matters. You need a little more white to make it a little bit brighter. If at any point you find the paint is too thick, you can either flatten it down or use the settings to change the paint thickness. But we'll be coming to that in a minute. Let's just fill in the shadow sides here and make our mountains a bit more three-dimensional. Just follow the shape of the mountain. With a little bit of variation, you see how I've introduced a bit of a zigzag here in this mountain shape just to make it a little bit more interesting. Texture. Look at that texture, bruh! Okay, don't worry too much about the sides here. We'll be covering up those in a minute. But, that's already a pretty good looking mountain range. And, again, it was really easy to do, wasn't it? Let's take our 2 inch brush and sort of settle these mountains down here with the waterline. Just use gentle touches. Because you see the 2 inch brush deforms when you press it against the canvas. If you use gentle pressure, you get this bristly pattern. If you push down hard, it becomes fully smooth. So let's just sort of fade it in here and at the bottom. So we have a little bit of a darker water line in here. And we can also use a blender brush to sort of Smooth things out. Alright, I missed that. I missed that. Back it up. Make it a little bit foggy. Get up. Settle these mountains down here with the water line. Just use gentle touches. Gentle? Because you see the 2 inch brush deforms when you press it against the canvas. If you use gentle pressure, you get this bristly pattern. If you push down hard, it becomes fully smooth. Let's just 
sort of faded in here and at the bottom. So we have a little bit oh, of a darker I rock see line it. in here. I see and we can also it. use a blender brush. I see. Oh, that is so nice! Out. Make it a little bit foggy at the bottom. Okay, I got you. I got you. There. It looks just about right, doesn't it? The next step will be another classic Bob move, and that's going to be a distant tree line. Little oh, we get to make the trees all the way in the back at the foot of the. Come on, mountain. trees! Come and on, we're trees! We're going to be using our bristle fan brush here, so you can use a joystick to swap the, the fan brush if necessary. You can always use the brush brush scaling as well if necessary, and we're going to be loading just some black paint here. Black. Maybe with a hint of blue for the further trees. There. And now just grip the brush all the way at the front and start stabbing away. And you'll see now that the paint is mixing with what's there. Which, in this case, we don't really want. We want to be able to easily paint our trees over top of what's there. So if you go into the settings again and we lower the canvas mixing sensitivity, you'll find that now it's a lot easier to paint across and we can easily put down these trees. So just put them down. You can vary them a little bit in how high or how low you put them or how large a brush you're using, but just take about the center of the of the canvas here and put down this row of trees in the back. So is he like going up in, okay, he's doing like a squiggly. We don't need to go too far to the sides because we'll be covering the sides of the foreground in a second. There. That's the first row done. And for the second row, let's use pure black with a fully loaded brush and just add in a second row of trees over top. A couple of them can be maybe a little bit taller. Maybe not too tall, like this. Why is it not coming out right? There. Now let's make sure that it also comes low enough because for the next step we'll again be working a little bit of magic with a 2 inch brush. So let's make sure the 2 inch brush is fully clean and then grip it so we have it horizontally and then gently pull... Hold up, wait, wait, slow down. You said we're going to do the black? Right. Second row, black. Y'all with me? Y'all see it? It's coming together. I just got to fill it in. I just got to fill it in. Child, this shit look a fucking mess. It look a mess. All right, so I'm just kind of stabbing at the painting, hoping this is going to create the effect that I want. And I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. Now I want to fill in the negative space. Okay. Pull down vertically to pull down these reflections. Whoa, whoa, hold on. Here why in the center, it... we may need to add a little bit of paint ourselves. Hold on, what, why is the mic doing that? There. And now gently move the two inch brush across to add a couple in. 
and then grip it so we have it horizontally and then gently pull down vertically to pull down these reflections. Here in the center, we may need to add a little bit of paint ourselves. There. And now gently... Oh my god, I fucked it up! Move the two-inch brush across to add a couple of lines. There. Alright, okay. Undo it a little bit. Then you said flick it across. Now to fade out the reflections, we're going to be using the blender brush. Here in the center, we may need to add a little bit of paint ourselves. There. And now gently move the two inch brush across to add a couple of lines. There. Now to fade out the reflections, we're going to oh, be using the blender whoa, brush again. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Okay, that that's not working right. Why isn't it working? And just take it vertically, either. Downwards what or brush upwards, is he using? gently pull down vertically to pull down these reflections. Oh, maybe it was the blender. Oh, look at that. Look at, look at, Here in the center, look at how that softened that. Of print ourselves. There. And now gently move the two-inch brush across to add a couple of lines. There. Yeah, now, to fade out the reflections, we're going to be using the blender brush again. And just take it vertically, either downwards or upwards. Oh, wow. Okay. I see the just effect. really fade this reflection in there. Try not to move around the reflection in the center too much. Just... Take care where you're making your brush strokes. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't there. know about these trees. And now for the final touch, and you're gonna love this. A really good tip. We're halfway through. Take the one inch filbert brush, which is right here on the top left. Okay. Make sure it's clean, and then just take it across. And you'll see how now we're creating a very detailed reflection by just making a few small strokes. It's that easy. Nigga, why really is my shit... Hold on. It must be my, my sister. Too. Doesn't that look splendid? I think so. Let's take our palette. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, yeah, that's what it was. My sensitivity. Forgot to change it back. Whatever. A knife again, and add in a final detail. Just little water lines. To mark where the shoreline is going to be. So with a clean knife, you can use the edge to scratch away at the canvas a little bit. Don't overdo it. Don't go too wild here, but make a few small lines. And it's pressure sensitive, so if you're using a light touch, you will only be remo removing a little bit of paint. If you're really hammering it in, it will be scraping away at the canvas. Okay. So, we're still looking pretty good so far, right? We have our mountains, we have our background trees. All that remains to do now is the entire foreground. And for this, 
we're going to be doing a classic Bob move. Still with our canvas misking sensitivity uh, at zero. And we're going to be using our smooth fan brush, fully loaded with black paint, and we'll be putting down two big old pine trees. Classic move at this stage of the painting. So let's put the first one here. And the second one right next to it. Like so. And then oh, using shit. the bristle fan brush. What a I go two. Go two. Oh shit. All right, there we go. There we go. Yes, I'm just going to clean this up. Okay, that was a fail. Close enough. You're just going to be making a couple of back and forth marks here. Just back and forth, back and forth. To mark down where our pine tree is going to be. Oh, wow. I didn't think it was this easy. That looks just about right. Now we will be tapping in a couple of crosses, maybe using our uh, one inch oval again, putting in black paint in there, and just tapping it here over the side, making sure we don't cover up our reflection in the center. There. And using the canvas scaler, we can save ourselves some time by just filling in the rest. There. Wait, hold on, wait! The scaler, we can save ourselves some time by just filling in the rest. Okay, okay. What, what is he using? Using. This? There. That looks just about right. Now, we'll be tapping in a couple of crosses, maybe using our uh, one inch oval again, putting in black paint in there, and just tapping it here over the side, making sure we don't cover up our reflection in the center. There. And using the canvas scaler, we can save ourselves some time by just filling in the rest. That's our entire foreground done on this side. Ready for some color. But before we add the color, let's do the other side first as well. So, on this side, let's again take the smooth fan brush. Oh. There, and put in another tree here. One here and a smaller one here. All right, gotta get the trees and again. And we'll take our one inch fill brush again to make 
some leafy trees this time. So just tap in here. And at this point, it could be a good call to lower your paint thickness. Because we don't want these trees, these leaves, to be fully dripping with paint just yet. We want them to be pretty flat. So, by lowering the paint thickness, the paint we will be outputting is going to be flatter. And just make sure you're leaving some space here for our sky in the background. Shit look ugly. Why he got my tree looking like this? Why he got my tree looking like this? There, and it's also just using the same brush. What you doing now? What you doing now? Making the outline for our little islands here on the side. There, and maybe using a bigger brush and a smaller canvas to fill it all in. No, he's he's walking us through a Bob Ross painting. So this is a Bob Ross painting. But he's just walking us through on how to do it on his his app or his um yeah his VR app there that's the base coat done of our foreground trees all that's left to do now on this painting is tapping in the color for the foreground and before we do that let's take our painting settings again and put them back to the default because in this case we want our color to pick up what's there so if we start with our sap green here on the bristle fan brush and go over these sides you'll see how it starts to pick up the dark or painting settings again and put them back to the default because in this case we want our color to pick up what's there so if we start with our sap green here on the bristle fan brush and go over these sides You'll see how it starts to pick up the dark, oh, and we get okay. a natural gradient as we come down the tree. Let's use a slightly darker color on the other side. I've also started using the smooth fan brush. Maybe the results here are a little bit better. Okay, that's also the same thing on this tree. Using our smooth fan brush. They got overpowered it too much. Hold on, let me take it back. Just going over these black areas and having the darker paint pick up by itself. And then taking a slightly darker mix for the other side of the tree because that's going to be the shaded side. There. Let's 
touch up the center parts here a little bit. Okay, that's looking good. Now, with our one inch filbert, we're going to be tapping in a couple of pushes and crosses down here at the bottom. So let's clear this palette again. Inch filbert. Maybe take some brown and some green right here. Some brown and green. And tap here at the bottom. And when you're doing this, make sure you leave enough room for the black as well. So before we put crosses across the entire thing, let's put a path here as well. Back to our palette knife, let's mix up some grey. A little bit of brown in there. Something like that. And we'll be using the knife edge again. Plenty of paint. To just mark out where a little path is going. Right here in the office side. I don't know what it is, they're going to have to wait. There. Add in a couple of brighter highlights here at the front. To add some variation. Well, that'll do. So back with the one inch filbert. Just tap in the remaining area here. Leaving some room for the blacks. And always using plenty of paint so you can paint across what's there. Oh, this is supposed to be a pathway. Always come back with a little bit of black to touch up the sides or the corners. Okay, that looks just about right. So let's do the same treatment on the other side. Just using the same brush or sap green and tap in here on these trees using plenty of paint. Maybe even mix in a little bit of our yellow on one of the trees to give it a brighter touch. But basically you're just tapping in these leaves here. Ah, oh, my trees look so ugly! And coming down here to our little island, maybe let's put a bit of a, a bush here in bright red color just to mix things up a bit. And just calm down this entire side here. Try to vary your colors a little bit, but not too much. It will automatically be picking up color from the background. Touch up what you've done with a little bit of black just to use a negative space to create more detail. 
Y'all see how easy this is? Okay, so final touch here will be. Child, I ain't ready, ready for this sipping paint. To pull this shit is hard. <laughs> Gently do it first. I know, I just said it was easy. I was lying. I was lying. Pulling down these edges here. I would just lie. I would lie. And then we can come back with our trick with clean one and filbert. And pulling some of this water across. Just to make a detailed reflection. And with the palette knife again, we can carve in our shorelines. Remember to use gentle pressure when needed. And a little bit more if you want a cleaner, brighter edge. But in general, be careful here in this in this stage. I'm just gonna add some dimension, some variety, and he wants to blend it out. Drag it down. You can always undo a mistake and try again. Oh shit. Why is my shit doing? You know, get the fan brush, bitch. Get the fan brush. Okay. I think there's one more thing we're going to be adding to this painting, and there's just a couple of small dead trees. So, using our rigger brush, which is the really small, thin one, just load up a bit of a brown here. And let's decide. We'll put one right here. And just gently take these lines here. There. And maybe another small one here. That looks about right. We can use just a tap oh. of our one inch filbert to settle it in. Oh. It was there. I don't want no and bush. A little I'm bit of extra detailing, which Bob always does, is using our knife edge just to scrape in here some more details. What are you do? What? Nigga, we and done! The stems of the bushes. No, I don't need no stems. I ain't a lesbian. Child, you you miss you messing up my painting. I don't have time with you. I don't have time with you. All right, I'm going to call this one done. All that's left now for you and for me to do is to sign it. Let's take our rigor again. And load it full of red paint and go ahead and sign your masterpiece. There, that's us done. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed your first painting in Vermilion. Bye bye. We have the power to decide whether. Oh my god, fuck it, fuck it. Raphael Warnock's story is. Okay, this is my painting. Um, I feel like I need a little more red in those bushes there, so I'm just add a little bit more. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Just kinda get in. No, no, no. It looked like someone had their period all over the bush. Alright! Um, this is, oh shit, put the shit down. This is it. Um, it actually was not as bad as I thought it would be, but I can definitely tell that 
Um, just let me see if I can get first person view so y'all can really see the detail. It's supposed to be some bushes. Okay, so you can see. I love how the knife really created texture for the mountains, created all those ridges. Um, I don't really care for the trees in the middle. I think my blue was a little too blue. Um, the trees could have been a little better. I don't think I blended it right here on the side. Um, but all in all, I learned some different techniques that I can use when we create our, our next painting. So I'm happy with it. I, I think I did pretty good for me to be a beginner. So, all right, y'all, let me get out of here. Let me see what my mama wants. Something about a flat tire or some shit. I'm sure she all right. Look, I got two other siblings. I can't always be the only one to come and save the day. All right, y'all, until the next one, be blessed. Get out of here.